There is nothing like sitting on a galloping horse. The pure sense of freedom and power and partnership with animal, I just love it. It's, it's my happiest place on earth. I have always loved horses. I was actually born in Texas. My grandfather in Texas was a great horseman. My mum had ridden horses. I had a, a slightly alternative um, upbringing through my teenage years, that's for sure. Uh, we lived off grid on a farm, which meant no electricity, no phone lines. Um, sometimes it flooded and we couldn't go to school. The good thing was that there was a few wild horses on the property. So even though we couldn't watch TV, I did have a lot of fun uh, playing around with some, some little wild horses back in my teenage years. And that's probably what helped start all the passion. I just loved the challenge of like figuring out how horses worked, how they thought, how they learned, what they could be trained to do, how you could overcome any difficulties, like why they had behaviour issues and how you could fix them. And I think I always kind of dreamed of training wild horses. That desire that I've always had to learn more and, and understand more about horse behaviour and how horses um, live in the wild versus how you know they live in domestic life um, has always driven me so I've done a lot in Mongolia um, and parts of Central Asia as well as you know developing countries with equine aid work always trying to improve my understanding and ability to to get the best out of every horse. I am definitely an animal person. So I've done lots with uh, Duka people in Mongolia, which ride reindeer up on the Siberian border. Right before COVID, we were in there in the depths of winter, um, and it was about negative 30, and we were camping in the mountains. It took days and days to get in there. I led the first ever winter expedition across the Gobi, and that was on camels. Animals can do so much, and I think the more modern we become, we forget just how incredible they are and what they're capable of and I love showing that to other people or finding out for myself just what these animals can do. I just find it yeah, exciting and inspiring and it, it lets you see the world in a completely different way. So I started the Wild Horse Project 10 years ago just to kind of document training some wild horses. I wanted to break the stereotype about wild stallions and prove that they could be competition horses. I've just brought this place and set it up kind of specifically for taking on wild horses and retraining them and producing them into riding horses. So in New Zealand, we've got the Kaimanawa horses, which are really famous in New Zealand. They live in the Central Plateau, the centre of the North Island. And we've got about three to 500 of them roaming in the wild. And when I first started working with them 10 years ago, there were more numbers and they were coming in skinnier, but because they are mustered and taken out and kept at a smaller number, they are in great condition and I've loved seeing them improve over the years. And then really near me, where I live now, um, we have the far northern horses which are sometimes called just Oapuri ponies or 90 mile beach horses that don't have an official name. We have this amazing coastal forest area that is filled with these wild horses that I think is unique to anywhere in the world. And I love it, I just absolutely love it. I love being able to help the horses and give them a future and help manage those numbers. So hopefully we have wild horses for future generations and they never disappear. So this is Panther. He's about six weeks out of the wild. Um, he's from the Kaimano Rangers, he was a stallion from the Kaimano Rangers and he's actually Jade's stallion that she's been working with. I've been mentoring her through the process of taming a wild stallion and we're just going to give him his breakfast, or Jade's going to give him his breakfast. Hey buddy! To control these horse numbers we have to muster them up. We will organise a time, we'll set up the stockyards, we'll set up a way to uh, usually you know a funnel system that we can run the horses in and get them into the stockyards and trap them and sort them in there. I think I have the best job, I get to go on my horse, I get to go on the lovely Thor. We will try and herd muster these horses into these yards um, where we can then sort and truck them out but yeah basically I get to go out round up wild horses, it's the absolute dream. I see them in the wild, I see them in the yards, I get to go for a bit of a gallop. It is like every bit of my childhood dreams come true. When you bring the wild horses home, that is when the hard work really, really starts. 
So we've got the two little wow babies in here and um, they just arrived about 24 hours ago. So with these ones, we're just trying to get them used to being around people. You know, he's only had 24 hours kind of in his new home. Um, two days ago, he was in the wild. So we're just trying to make it nice. The babies are pretty easy because you can get in quite close to them and they're actually a bit happier with you in kind of close to them and giving them scratches. But you know, um, he hasn't had a rope on him much. He doesn't know how to lead well yet. Um, so just trying to make it a really positive experience for them. And you can see it's been pouring rain for the last couple of days. And these guys, their coats are all matted, you know. They've been cold and wet. So trying to give them a good scratch and fluff up their coats and kind of think that it's a fun thing to be around people for the first time. Yeah. Like this is really good. This is what we want. Hi. Hi. You know, he should be a fluffy little baby, but all this rain. I'm just trying to get him a little bit more comfortable and all fluffy again. For years, I did this by myself, which I might not recommend that highly. <laughs> it's much safer to have a team around you. Just having, you know, a second set of eyes on the ground watching the horses behind you while you work with one is, is super helpful. It's a big, big job looking after them when they're in the yard. Trying to get them settled in and actually eating hay for the first time or eating hard feed for the first time. Farm management like that actually takes up a huge amount of the time and, and the hours of the day. That's the way, good, good. And again, the more people I can get involved throughout the training process so the horses get used to different faces and slightly different human behavior, the better it is for them. That's better, nice. Okay, and whereabouts, whereabouts is the foal? Um, so I just got the phone call that there is a foal, um, that a wild foal that has ended up on someone's farm and it needs to be picked up. Obviously the farm owners don't want a wild foal running around. Um, they've got it into a paddock. I think there's stockyards. And so we're gonna go and try and pick up this wild foal um, that's running around in the far north. Yeah, we can make it work now. Yep, we can come up soon. And uh, just give me, give me 20 minutes to get all my horses and stuff together. I'm always pretty excited. Like at the end of the day, I love working with wild horses and you know, I love, I love doing the mustering and I love being able to help. This is what I, what I live for, so I'm happy to go do it. It's always a bit of an exciting surprise to see what we get and what we're picking up. This is Thor, he's my mustering horse in chief. He was once a wild stallion with his own herd and he's pretty good at herding horses. He had a bit of life experience doing that before he became a domestic horse. And now he's the one I use whenever there's wild horses to pick up or horses to herd up. Um, yeah, he's my faithful mate in all these adventures. So he's coming along today to save the day. Buddy, you're not coming this time, come on. I constantly get calls, you know, maybe a couple of horses have wandered onto someone's farm or, you know, they've gotten themselves into a bad situation. So it seems like at least once a month we have, you know, some rescue operation that we have to go and pick up some wild horse somewhere. It keeps things exciting, you know, you never know what you're going to get, it's a bit of a lucky dip. So obviously going to pick up wild horses, it's not quite as simple as just turning up with the trailer and they walk on the trailer. I've put my best horse on, Thor's on the trailer already. Um, we're going to use him for herding the wild foal, hopefully into a smaller pen. We've got a few people on foot that will be able to help us with, along with Thor, push it into a trailer. It's actually pretty nice today. We've got a few helpers on the ground, which is great. The cat can't come on a wild horse mission today. Tried. Our second cat has loaded itself for the mission, so we'll just do some unloading before we go. Pike litter is not needed for this kind of mission. All passengers aboard. All passengers aboard, we're all ready to go. <laughs> We've got a bit of driving to do, probably a bit of manoeuvring off-road of getting down to where this wild horse is and then unloading, herding the horse. Hopefully get on the trailer and bring it home again. Oh yeah, I see it, cute, 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 cute. If I use my horse to get it up to this gate and then just pop it in that pen. I think, well, give it a go. I 
think the key to this kind of stuff is being flexible. Um, yeah, just wild horses, things change rapidly. Well, we talked before about um, plans changing rapidly and plans changed as soon as we went in the gate. Um, you could see like it's just it's an absolute baby, like it's way smaller than I thought and as soon as it saw Thor, it just hooked onto Thor and came trotting up and I just got really small in the grass so it didn't get scared of me. And then it just literally followed him through the gate straight into the pen, went about, about as smoothly as it could possibly go really. So we love days like this. Um, yeah. Thor's brilliant, he's raised, he's helped babysit a whole bunch of wild orphans, so it's not his first rodeo. So now we've just got to get in the float, but yeah, great success so far. All right, do you want to just get back a little bit, Fleur? There you go, all right, little bub, and we'll just take it nice and slow. Just give her a second here. That's the way. That's the way. You're okay, bub bub. You're okay. I think horses have given me so much over the years that it's really nice to be in a position when I can give back and help so many horses on their, their road. If people can think to call me when horses are in trouble and I can go and help, then, then I really love being in that position. for the hay. You'd be nice, buddy. Thor would actually like his, his turn to say a few things, get some opinions across. How was your day for? Oh, it's pretty good. Pretty successful day. I'd look, like some food now, some dinner. <laughs> hey, my friend. Hey, my friend. I think I'm not going to be short of wild horses anytime soon. There is a long, long line of them waiting behind these ones, you know, in a couple of months when these ones are all out and off to new homes, we'll probably do another muster and get another set in. I'm really honoured to be part of that programme and, and to be part of the solution and helping those horses rather than just be a passerby or, or just reading about it. If I can inspire more people to take on wild horses and train them, then I think that's a great thing for wild horse populations everywhere. I hope I can be involved for years to come and, and feel very honoured to be part of that.